right, thank you very much. And hello again, radio friends. How in the world are you? Doing okay? Well, yes, this is your friend, Dr. Cook. Fall is pretty well underway, and of course the fall colors in the Midwest and Northeast are uh, beautiful. Out in California, I presume things are turning golden, and uh, you have a little different kind of, of terrain there, different colors, but all beautiful. Have you ever looked up and thanked God for the world that he made? Take one of the leaves on the tree and look at it through the microscope and see the, the infinite care that went into the designing of that leaf. And look at, at, at the, the beauty of things around you. And the world as we see it, like a jewel hung in the sky. Look up and thank God for it sometimes. I think most of his creations go blindly on without ever thinking of their creator. This, I think, is the basic complaint as presented in Romans 1, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Take time sincerely to thank your Lord today. Would you? I thank him, for instance, for eyesight. When I think of some of my dear ones who are the victims of failing eyesight. And it's hard to see the fine print any longer and hard to read. And the eyesight is going. And then I look out and see with a, a certain amount of, of uh, sharpness that I still possess uh, for long distances and fine print and whatnot. And I thank God for the eyes that he gave me for the health that I have. You ever thank your Lord? Pretty good idea today, wouldn't you say? Look up and tell God what you're thankful for, even now. I want to conclude, if I may, and if I can. <laughs> you know the difference between those two verbs, don't you? Um, the uh, comments that we have on uh, Proverbs 7, 1 to 4, what you do with the Bible determines how good it is to you. So he says, keep my commandments and live. Keep my law as the apple of thine eye. Keep my commandments, that means live them. My law as the apple of thine eye means care about them. Care similar to that which you exercise. If, for example, you get something in your eye, a foreign object, you're very careful to get it out. He says, you keep my commandments with that kind of care. Then he says, bind them upon thy fingers. That, I think, was what we were talking about the last time we got together. Bind them, that is the commandments, on thy fingers. Apply the word of God to what you do. Do what you do in the enablement and on the authority of the word of God, and you'll never go wrong. God will never lead you in answer to prayer. He will never lead you to do something that is contrary to his revealed word, the Bible. So let the word of God be the, the criterion. Let it be the measuring stick. Let it be the authority. Let it be the standard by which you determine what is right and wrong for you. Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. The word of Christ dwell in you richly. This is normal Christianity. Do what you do on the authority of and in the enablement gained from the word of Christ of God. Then said he, write them, that is God's commandments, upon the table of thine heart. This has to do, whenever God speaks of the heart, he speaks of the inner person, the whole being, knowledge, emotions, and will. And he says, let the word of God then affect all of your inner being. Let it control 
your knowledge and your use of knowledge. Let it control, let the Word of God control your feelings, your emotions, and what you do as a result of your emotions. Let the Word of God determine what you will to do. When you bind the Word of God upon the table of your heart, you are, in effect, making God's Word operative in every area of your inner life. Do you get that? Now, how do you do this? Well, I think we'll have to realize that your inner life is affected by everything that you read or see or hear. Inevitably, your mind, it's what the psychologists, I think, now call the unconscious mind. They used to call it subconscious, now they call it unconscious. I sometimes joke and say the unconscious mind was named for a college freshman, however that may be. <laughs> uh, there is a portion, beloved, there is a portion of your brain that takes in and stores every conscious impact that is made upon it. Everything that you see and hear and read and experience is stored in that computer. So that if the Word of God is stored in the computer, so to speak, it will become a determining factor in your reaction to life, in your decisions concerning life, in your feelings about life. People say to me, I can't help I feel this way, and I have to agree with them. I say, yeah, I agree, you can't help it. But you can do something about it. The Word of God can change your feelings about things. Yes, it can. The psalmist said that he was upset. He said, I was so upset, I said, all men are liars. I was like a beast, he said, before thee. But then he said, I went into the sanctuary and I began to understand. God's word and God's presence can change your feelings about things. Indeed, he can. So, he says, write these commandments on the tables of thy heart. This has to do then with the memory, the active memory that applies itself to knowledge, feeling, and will, to your whole being, the inner person, that immortal spirit that will live forever, the real you. He said, put the Word of God to work there. Now, a moment ago I said, how do you do this? You start by reading. What you read does have a tremendous effect upon you. What you read and what you see does have a profound effect upon you. So, read then the Word of God day by day. Let God's Word come in through the eye gate. Read it aloud. Do you ever read the Bible out loud? You might feel embarrassed sitting all by yourself reading the Bible aloud. But try it sometime. You'll be amazed at the, at the different effect it has upon you and you'll be surprised happily so at some of the insights that you gain by reading the bible aloud read your your bible read it aloud when you have opportunity and think about it that's the second thing meditate think about the word of god meditate on it turn it over ask yourself as you read a passage what does this mean what did it mean to the people to whom it was written? And what ought it to mean to me? And what shall I do about it? Never read the Bible without constructing some step of obedience under the guidance of the Spirit of God that you yourself will take in response to God's truth. If you're going to bind God's truth upon the tables of your heart, that means read it, that means think about it, and the third thing, that means pray about it. Pray back to God, so to speak. I learned this from Stephen Alford years ago. 
He said, when you read the Bible, write down what God has said to you and then pray back to him that truth until your heart is warm and tender with it. And your eyes have been filled with tears and your heart has been made pliant to his will. Pray back to God what he has said to you. Pray over what God's word has said to you at any given time. And then, of course, the fourth thing is to look for a chance to obey what he's told you. Expect God to give you opportunities to obey his word after you have read it, thought about it, prayed about it, and given yourself to God to obey it. Good idea? He says, write them upon the table of thine heart. Now, here's an interesting comment that follows that third verse. Verse 4 says, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. What's he talking about? He says, take God's word into your family. Think about the Bible as affectionately and as dynamically as you would think about one of your close relatives. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. Now, I have one sister who uh, throughout my lifetime has had an immense and blessed impact upon my own life. And when I think of her, I think with affection and appreciation and love and concern, of course. Well then, he says, say unto wisdom. This is, in other words, God's word. Say unto God's word, the Bible, as we would say today, thou art my sister. In other words, look upon the word of God with the same affection and appreciation and concern that you would have for a near member of your immediate family. You are involved personally with that person. You are concerned for their welfare. You are grateful for their love and affection and kindness and so it ought to be for you and for me, for the word of God. We should be concerned about God's word and our relationship with it. That's what he's talking about. You want to apply that today? You see, it's a far cry from having the Bible on the shelf or carrying it under your arm on Sunday to having the word of God in your heart and being concerned about it as though your relationship was that of a near relative. But that's exactly what's going to keep you safe under the stresses and strains of testing and temptation. Well, it's been a good study, hasn't it? You want to meet temptation successfully? Meet it with the Word of God in your heart and in your conduct. Dear Father, today, may thy Word control our thoughts and words and actions and our reactions under stress. In Jesus' name, amen. Till I meet you once again by way of radio, walk with the King today and be a blessing. This has been program number 2456.